Good afternoon to all. Respected Chair, Professor Sheila Mishra, Mr. Tejas Garge, Dev Madam, and all my dear audience. Uh, this is just I'm giving the introduction about the geology and geomorphology of Maharashtra. It is not my research work because I've been working on the floods, uh, the recent floods, the historical floods, and the paleo floods. And just now, the earlier speaker, my research area was the Tapi Basin. Okay? But uh, since I've been invited, this is, I'm giving you the introduction only about uh, geology and geomorphology of Maharashtra, and it is based on the work published by Professor Vishwas Kai. Uh, who was the student of Professor Rajguru, and I am his student. So as far as the uh, landscape of Maharashtra, that is geomorphology of Maharashtra, perhaps many of you must be aware, it is being divided into three parts. Number one is the Kokan lowland or the Kokan plain that we call. Number two is the Maharashtra plateau. And number three is the Western Ghat. So this is the landscape of Maharashtra known to everyone. Okay? If we talk about the geographical area of Maharashtra, it is 3.08 lakh square kilometer. And about 23% of this landscape is between 500 and 625 meter ASL. 7.5% of the land is below 150 meter. It is mainly the lower part of the Tapi Basin and the Kokan lowland. And only 3.2% of the area is above 800 meter uh, mean sea level. Okay. Maharashtra has been divided into three parts. The first one and the most prominent and the major one is the Maharashtra Plateau that we call Desh area, which covers an area of about 2.76 lakh square kilometer. And this Maharashtra Plateau is characterized by various hill ranges, plateaux, and Western Ghat is the western margin of the Maharashtra Plateau that plays the orographic effect and because of that, because of that orographic effect, this part of Maharashtra receives very less amount of rainfall. Sometimes uh, or uh, the uh, rainfall which is about minimum is 500, millimeter, uh, 500 millimeters per annum. Okay. So, uh, as I have said, the, because of the orographic effect, the rainfall over the plateau ranges from 600 to 1,000 millimeters. 600 millimeters mainly in the rain shadow area of Maharashtra. And if we, when we go towards east, particularly in the Vidabe area, the amount of rainfall increases. And as I have said, the dry core of Maharashtra plateau receives the rainfall less than 500 millimeters. Say, for example, uh, in Nagar, Ahmed Nagar district, the amount of rainfall is very less at uh, the places. Okay. Uh, the important rivers of Maharashtra, as earlier speaker has said, the Tapi River, which is the second largest waste flowing river of India, followed by the Godavari, the largest one of the peninsula India. Bhima is the tributary of Krishna, but we consider Bhima as one of the major rivers in Maharashtra. Later on, it joins the Krishna River, and the Krishna River is the another one. On Maharashtra Plateau, as well as in the Kokan region, there are several small plateaus. See, for example, Amannagar is a plateau, or Mahabaleshwar is also a plateau, Javar is the another plateau. So, on the plateau itself, there are several plateaus on the Maharashtra Plateau, and some of them are in the Kokan area, particularly Javar Plateau is a prominent plateau in the Kokan region of Maharashtra. This is the Mahabaleshwar Plateau, perhaps many of you must have visited. It is the Dury Crested Plateau uh, covered by the laterite. Okay. Then the second one is the Western Ghat, which is commonly known as Sayadri, and it is the great escarpment of India. 
ki western ghat margin is about it starts from the south of the tapi river near nawapur and it extends up to the kolhapur district of maharashtra it runs for about 700 kilometers it is parallel to the coast of kokan and the escarpment is sea facing then this sayadri was certainly formed after the eruption of deccan volcanic province therefore definitely sayadri or the western ghat is not more than 650 million years old and it has been evolved only in cenozoic era okay if we look at the crest line of the ghat it Uh, ranges between 600 to more than 1400 meters and due to very high peaks there are so many high peaks on in, in the western ghat and some saddle passes or gaps in the western ghat this is the cross profile or the long uh, what not the cross profile the profile along the western ghat taken from the north to south and we can see that there are several prominent peaks in the western ghat and there are several passes in the western ghat okay the prominent peaks in the western ghat saler is the uh, tallest fort in maharashtra whose height is 1580 meters earlier it was reported 1567 meters but recently myself and professor vishwas kai we have visited saler fort and we have found that the height of the saler is not 1567 but it is 1580 meters okay uh, kursu by everybody is aware it is uh, the the highest peak of maharashtra then harishchandragarh torna mahabaleshwar these are the peaks of course toranma is not the peak of the western ghat because it is in the satpura range which is 1155 meters and chikaldara is the another hill range in the satpura particularly in the gavilgarh range having the elevation of 1188 meters okay of the western ghat we have several options and the prominent offshoots are the to the north we have satma range because it starts from saptashringi and to the west of saptashringi and because ajanta is located on this range so we call it as the satma ajanta range the second one is the harishchandra balaghat range and the to the south we have mahadev range but of course we have satpura and gavilgarh ranges these are not the offshoots of western ghat because satpura is different and gavilgarh is the part of the satpura range and as i have said there are several ghats everybody uh, most of you must have traveled along the ghats one is near kasara that is what we call third ghat one is between pune and mumbai that is called as bor ghat and there are so many other ghats uh, along the western ghat everybody knows that the western ghat is a water divide between the west flowing rivers and the east flowing rivers take the example of the godavari river uh, whose source is only about few kilometers away from this place it travels for the distance of about 1400 uh, 1250 kilometers and meets the bay of bengal whereas the source of the godavari river is only about 100 meters away from the western coast of maharashtra so western ghat acts as a major divide of Uh, the rivers of maharashtra uh, west flowing rivers which are very small in length and the east flowing river the prominent one are godavari bhima and krishna okay then the last one the uh, about the geomorphology of the maharashtra is the kokan lowland we also call it as a kokan plain but it is not a it is really not a plain area because the kokan lowland is a low relief area it is dissected coastal lowland arabian coast is the western margin of the kokan lowland and the foothill or the foothill zone of the western ghat is the eastern margin of the kokan lowland and the kokan area is been divided into two parts the north kokan and south kokan particularly in maharashtra okay 
As far as the Kokon lowland is concerned, its length is 560 meters, width 50 to 150 kilometers, area 22,100 square kilometer, elevation ranges from 500 to 300 meter. 75 percent of the area of the Kokon lowland is below 250 meters, and the important rivers of the Kokon lowland are Vaitarna, Ullas. Amba, Kundalika, Savitri, Shastri and Vasisthi. But there are about 25 rivers which are flowing to the west and meeting the Arabian Sea from the, uh, which are flowing over the Kokon lowland. The Kokon lowland, particularly the southern part of the Kokon area dominate, uh, is dominated by the laterites and the landscape is controlled by uh, the laterites, particularly in the south Kokon. Now, as far as the geology of Maharashtra is concerned, we know that mainly the geology of Maharashtra is covered by the Deccan Trap and it is one of the four major continental flood basalt provinces in the world and at present the extent of the Deccan Trap is about 5 lakh uh, square kilometers and when eruption of the Deccan, Platte, uh, Deccan basalt took place, it was covering an area of about 10 lakh square kilometers. So only 5 lakh square kilometers is remaining now. And major portion of it is in Maharashtra. Then Deccan basalt, as we know, it is 65 million years old. I'm sorry. And uh, it is in the... Uh, it is when... Indian plate was in the southern hemisphere at that time at the reunion hotspot. The Deccan uh, volcanic eruption took place and the Deccan uh, trap was formed. It occupied 81% of the geographical area of Maharashtra. Deccan trap is, uh, there are two types of flows of Deccan volcanic province. One is the compound flows which we call Pahoe which are in the northern part around Nasik particularly where we are sitting and to the south and to the e uh, east, eastern of eastern part of Maharashtra we have Aha flows and these are the other, other than Deccan basalt province, these are the three flood basalt provinces in the world, one is in uh, South America, Parana, this is in Africa, Karu and this is in the uh, Siberia and uh, in Russia, Siberia. Okay. Now, if we see the stratigraphy of the Deccan basalt, it has been reconstructed and mapped based on the lava flows geochronology and geochemistry. So, we have three prominent subgroups in Maharashtra of the Deccan basalt province. The oldest one is Kursubai. Uh, the flows that we have here near Trambakeshwar or uh, Kursubai area is the oldest one followed by Lonala and then Y. And there are several formations. The oldest formations are the Jawar formations which is about uh, at the most 50 kilometers away from this place and the younger one are the Desur in the southern part of Maharashtra. Okay. Now, regarding the Tapi alluvium, which earlier speaker has mentioned, Tapi alluvium covers about 5% of the area of Maharashtra and it is mainly in Nandurbar, Dhule, Jargao and Akola districts of Maharashtra. The other rocks are the Precambrian rocks which cover about 11% area of Maharashtra. They are in the Sindhudurga district, Nagpur district, Gondia and Bandara districts of Maharashtra. If we talk about the Proterozoic and Gonwana sediment, it covers an area only about 3% of the Maharashtra state which is located in Nagpur, Gondia, Bandara, Yavatmar and Chandrapur districts, particularly in the eastern part of Maharashtra or Vidarbha region that we call. So with this, uh, I finish my talk. I am thankful to all of you for your attention and special thanks to Professor Vishwas Kai for making this Atlas of Maharashtra, which is the Geo Heritage Atlas of Maharashtra. On the basis of that, I have prepared my presentation. Thank you very much.